Hello everyone, this is Austin from Marvelous Videos and today we have Jeepers Creepers Franchise Explained. Every time you hear the words Jeepers Creepers, does the creepy song start playing in your head? Are you scared that the creeper will come out from the shadows and hunt you down? Jeepers Creepers came out in the year 2001 and introduced all of us to a horror villain that we won't forget anytime soon. The Demonic Creeper. The monster and the song stuck with us, and the makers of the movie went on to construct a successful franchise on the back of the original movie, and well, the creeper has reigned ever since. Interestingly, the first movie was inspired by a real life case of a man killing his wife and a pair of siblings witnessing him dumping her body, which led to the man named Dennis Depew tailing the kid's car to catch them. What followed was a manhunt which ended with Depew dying. Obviously, the story was fictionalized and the lore of the creeper awakening every 23 years to kill and dismember for 23 days was added and that is how the creeper was born. The movie was directed by Victor Salva. The roles of Trish and Derry Jenner, the siblings, are played by Gina Phillips and Justin Long while Jonathan Breck takes on the role of the creeper. The film actually derives its title from the same name song from 1938, which is featured in the film in a Paul Whiteman version. Let's jump right in to this scary franchise. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. It's waiting. It's Hungry, Jeepers Creepers, 2001. The movie begins with a pair of siblings, Derry and Trish, driving through the countryside, and they were written as siblings to eliminate any chance of romance, so the movie could only focus on being scary. This was actually Justin Long's first horror movie, and his amazing audition was what had landed him the role. Suddenly, a strange driver in a rusted 1941 Chevrolet COE tow truck tries to run them off the road, and then they see the same driver tossing what appears to be bodies wrapped in blood-stained sheets into a big pipeline jutting out of the ground near an abandoned church after allowing the truck to pass him. He notices them, and they flee. Breck was extremely scary, and had managed to scare the shit out of the director which had landed him the role. And we can see why. Justin and Gina had not seen Breck in his creeper costume prior to filming, so their reactions on seeing him are 100% real. Derry and Trish return to the spot and check for the bodies. Trish holds Derry's feet as he examines the pipe, but he freaks out as rats emerge in front of him, leading Trish to lose her grip on his legs, and he slides straight down the pipe. The pipe opens up into a basement of sorts, and he discovers hundreds of victims sewn together on the walls of a vast cavern beneath the church at the bottom. Derry returns to the surface, deeply shaken by what he has witnessed, and they depart the scene, stopping at a petrol station to call the cops. While they wait for the cops, they receive a call from a local psychic, Giselle Hartman, who plays the song Jeepers Creepers warning them that if they hear it, they would be in grave peril. This is the first time we hear the tune. Despite being terrified, they pay no attention to her. They come to hear that the historic church has gone up in flames, and all proof of any bodies has been destroyed, according to the news. The siblings are then finally allowed to leave with a security escort provided by the police. The police are attacked and killed by the driver of an armored truck. He loads the dead into his truck and resumes the chase as Trish and Derry flee. Derry and Trish try to enlist the help of a local cat lady, but the killer tracks them down and murders her. The home of the cat lady in the movie actually belonged to a cat lady. They, however, manage to hit the killer with their automobile and repeatedly run him over. When its wings, which had previously been unnoticed, begin flapping around after they crush the body, they comprehend its unnatural nature. They drive to a police station to await their parents' arrival, but Giselle arrives and informs them that they are still in danger. She reveals the true nature of the creature. It is an old demon known as the Creeper, who rises every 23rd spring for 23 days to feast on human body parts, which become part of its own body after consumption. She also tells them that it hunts down its victims through fear, and that by sniffing Trish and Derry's terror, it has discovered something it enjoys. Interestingly, the skin of the Creeper is gray in this film, but black in the sequels. The creeper breaks into the police station, takes over the cells, and it is swarmed by police after it feasts on convicts. But it kills a lot of them. 
Trish and Derry are led upstairs by Giselle, who tells them that one of them will die while the song Jeepers Creepers plays in the background. The creeper approaches Giselle and sniffs her, but she flees before the creeper can discover Trish and Derry. Derry is apprehended by the creeper. Trish tries to reason with it, sacrificing her own life for the sake of her brothers. The police barge in and take aim, but the creeper takes Derry and flees out the window. Finally, the Creeper's new hideout, an abandoned boiler factory, is revealed in the closing scene, and the audience discovers what the Creeper wanted. It consumed Derry's eyeballs by ripping out the back of his head, leaving him an eyeless, unmoving corpse. In the background, the song Jeepers Creepers plays. In the early 20th century, the profanity Jeepers Creepers was coined as a polite euphemism for Jesus Christ. When the film was released, it set a record for a four-day Labor Day weekend with 15.8 million in box office receipts. Jeepers Creepers made a total of 59.2 million globally, with 37.9 million in North America, even after working through multiple budget cuts. The Creeper is back for more. Jeepers Creepers 2, 2003. The 23 days of the Creeper's carnage were cut short at the ending of the first film, and the second film picks up a couple of days after the first film ended. In Jeepers Creepers 2001, Victor Salva invented the every 23 years, for 23 days it gets to eat rule, to ensure that there would be no sequel unless the film was set in the future, which we knew the studio wouldn't want. Francis Ford Coppola, on the other hand, discovered a simple loophole and set it within the same 23 days as the first film. So, in order to avoid filming another sequel, this film is set on the 23rd day. The movie opens with a young boy, Billy Taggart, being taken away by the Creeper as his brother and father helplessly watch, and that signals to us the hunt is not over. The rest of the movie is largely set on a school bus which is carrying a high school basketball team on their way home from the state championship. The school bus was referred to as the Creeper's lunchbox during filming because he picks his prey one by one. The Creeper targets the bus and one by one blows its tires out with shurikens. The shurikens were made by the crew using cattle bones. All of these road sequences were shot on the Tejon Ranch in California on a tiny stretch of private road and the bus interiors were shot on set in an airport hangar. A student named Minxie gets visions while sitting on the bus warning her about the Creeper and this is where shit really starts hitting the fan. The bus is left stranded alongside the road and they have no way of contacting for help. They manage to flag down a car that promises to alert authorities, but that never happened. The first person to fall victim to the Creeper is head coach Charlie Hanna, as she is picked up and taken away without anyone noticing. The next one to be taken away by the Creeper is bus driver Betty Borman, and chaos ensues on the bus with all the children panicking. A fight breaks out among the students themselves as to whether they should stay inside the bus or leave and look for help. While this is going on, the Creeper comes back to pick out its next targets. There is a scene where the Creeper flirts with the teenagers on the bus, which was almost cut out because the director thought it would be too hilarious for the movie. He was afterwards glad he didn't because the sequence was a hit with the screening crowd. Minxie has another vision where she learns the truth about the Creeper's existence and she tells everyone else. In the meantime, Billy Taggart's father and brother hear about these kidnappings on a police radio line and head towards the location of the bus to find out what had taken their son in the opening scene. They manage to radio the kids from a smashed car on the side of the road and tell them that help is on the way. However, it was too late because the creeper shows up almost immediately after and starts killing the kids one by one. This entire sequence is grisly with blood and guts flying everywhere, decapitated heads and limbs being eaten by the creature, and sheer terror instilled by the monstrous flying creature. Finally, when the Taggarts arrive on the scene with harpoon-like weapons, a teamwork between them and remaining students succeeds in subduing the creeper. But they realize that the creature isn't dead. The creeper is a demon and thus he has simply gone into his 23 year slumber, after which he would rise again. The last scene shows the Taggart farm, which now boasts of the Creeper as an attraction called Bad Out of Hell, which was actually the film's alternate title for a while. 
It has been 23 years since they managed to catch it and a group of teenagers walk in to check on the unconscious creeper tied to a wall inside their barn. Father Taggart, sitting guard besides the creature, simply says that it was time for the creature to rise again, followed by the Jeepers Creepers song playing subtly in the background. Because you expect surprise attacks in this genre, you wind up assessing the craftsmanship rather than being terrified. On that level, kudos to the makeup and costume teams, particularly Richard Radlifson who was responsible for the Creeper makeup and lead outfit. The Creeper in itself is horrifying enough and the movie packs a punch. Third time's the charm. Jeepers Creepers 3 2017 The third movie in the franchise is interestingly set in between the first and second films and thus shows the events that went down in the couple of days after Derry died and before the creature was captured by the Taggarts. The movie begins 23 years before Derry got attacked and shows a man running from the creeper. The man is taken away by the creeper and his friend watches this happen only to hear a loud scream and a machete along with a dismembered hand that belonged to the creeper fall to the ground. The scene shifts to present day where the police have apprehended the creeper's truck and are checking it for clues. This turns out to be day 19 of the creeper's hunt. An officer looks into the truck and booby-trapped spikes in the back of the truck harm him. Dan Tashtego, the sheriff, arrives on the scene and he sets off a trap and a spear emerges from the truck's tailpipe, impaling his hat and a car. The two proceed to inspect the spot where the creeper flew away. The truck is seized and the officers discover that the creeper has done similar things before, including destroying the church in the first film in order to conceal information from the officers. Tubbs intends to demolish the vehicle in the impound yard, but Tashtego believes it won't make it there at all. This film takes place in North Poho, while the other two had taken place in South Poho. Tashtego turns out to be correct because the creeper returns for his truck. Frank and Deputy Dana Lang were behind the wheel of the flatbed tow truck that was tasked with transporting the truck to the impound yard. It is unexpectedly assaulted by the creeper while en route. The vehicle is unchained and slides off the bed. When the tow truck cops exit, they witness the creeper standing on top of the truck as it pulls away, reenacting a scenario from the original film. The creeper kidnaps Frank and leaves Lang transfixed in terror. Galen Brandon, the mother of the youngster killed by the creeper in the opening sequence is visited by a vision of her son. He mentions an artifact Galen has concealed on her farm and strongly advises her to leave. Galen resists the warning and Kenny walks away, displaying his damaged back, which the creeper had stitched up, confirming that he was a ghost. Kenny was only a corpse in the first film, but in this one he has a much larger role. Addison Brandon, her granddaughter, notices Galen crying on the hilltop. He then walks over to her horse to feed it. Meanwhile, Tashtego tells Tubbs that he is going to eliminate the creeper once and for all. In order to accomplish this, he has assembled an assassination team. However, the creeper strikes again, this time on a group of kids. Kirk is out riding his dirt bikes with his mates Luke, Red, and Jody. The creeper's truck is discovered. The boys are terrified of the booby traps, so they all jump on their bikes and try to run, but all of them are either killed or captured because they are no match for the demon. In her quest to find some hay for her horse, Addison ends up at her friend Bubby's house, who helps her find some. Galen is seen digging somewhere up under a tree while they are feeding the horse. When Kenny appears again and urges her to stop, she persists on learning more about the creeper and why it killed her son. She discovers an old creeper hand, which raises her into the air and grants her a vision in the ancient origins of the creeper. Meanwhile, Addison is kidnapped by the creeper. Tashtego's team arrives, and they speak to Galen who reveals all that she knows about the creeper hand, and the climax approaches which results in a grisly fight between the team and the creeper. However, most of the team dies in battle, and Tubbs retreats knowing that he cannot win. However, Addison manages to escape the creeper and wound him. She returns home, and the next day, Buddy leaves for his basketball championship, tying it all in and connecting the movie to the second installment. It ends with Trish vowing revenge for her brother, Derry's death. The earlier movies featured an unknown supernatural monster that was ruthless, had a high level of intelligence, yet was still vulnerable. Fighting the Creeper in this movie was impossible. His vehicle is impervious to explosive gunshots, and he has Jedi-like maneuvers. However, in the second film, 
he is captured, which is a major inconsistency. This film gives the impression that the Creeper is far more well known than in the previous flicks. They formed a Creeper hit squad with the relatives and friends of the victims. Knowing that the Beast returns every 23 years makes the sequel seem rather absurd. Future of Jeepers Creepers Franchise The franchise has run for a long time and has encountered its own share of troubles. However, the Terrian Creeper has the chance to make a comeback. It is one of the few horror franchises to be established in the 2000s and scared the crap out of moviegoers. The dates are still iffy, but it is rumored to be releasing on the 28th of October. Jeepers Creepers 4 is set to be the first installment of a new trilogy, giving fans what they've been waiting for since Jeepers Creepers 2 was released in 2003. Timo Voronsola will lead the relaunch, and he's been dubbed the right fit for bringing the franchise back to life. The film's distribution in North America will be handled by Screen Media. Jeepers Creepers 4, formerly known as Jeepers Creepers Reborn, was revealed earlier this year with a Halloween release date. Gabriel Freelick is the sole known cast member involved with the relaunch of the franchise. The impending fourth installment's logline reveals two characters, Chase and Lane. The Creeper's latest onslaught has landed right in the middle of a couple. Lane will most likely be kidnapped by the monster and the actress who will play her has been revealed. The plot of Jeepers Creepers Reborn revolves around guests of a fictitious horror event known as Horror Hound Festival. The event is being held for the first time in Louisiana. Unfortunately for the attendees, the Creeper will be hunting and murdering individuals who are attending the festival and those who are nearby. Chase and his lover Lane will be the main characters of Jeepers Creepers Reborn. Chase, a horror fanatic, pulls his girlfriend Lane along for the journey. But it is Lane who develops a weird connection with the Creeper. She begins to have visions and premonitions about the Creeper and the town's past. Lane will most likely be the film's final girl, and the only one who can stop the Creeper until the next installment. The filming of the series had wrapped up in January 2021, and according to announcements, the movie should be here this fall. It will be super exciting to see what the Creeper gets up to and how the franchise continues with a brand new cast and crew. Stay tuned. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.